<clears throat> and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the book in question. All right. It's just happy juice. True. So this is uh, this just came out by our good friend John Chad. Uh, it's called Pinball: A Graphic History of the Silver, Silver Ball, obviously by John Chad. Um, I don't know if everyone gets this, but it looks like there was a zine that came with this. So uh, let's just get right into this thing, shall we? down really quick let's look at the goodies we got here looks like we got some pinball stickers we'll be putting one on our travel case and then we'll put one on the studio door these are pretty cool I dropped one I'll have to pick that up later uh, the Pacific Pinball Museum in Alameda California what's up have I been there I don't know uh, oh my god. Two Jack, thanks. Love, John Chad. Aw, BB. John, I love you, buddy. That's adorable. An unboxing video. And then here is the, uh, Constructing Comics. Comics vs. Pinball by John Chad. Oh my gosh, it's a zine. I love his depiction of himself. Go to the Pacific Pinball Museum. The book isn't level. It's level here. Oh, hello there. My name is John Chad. And if you're reading this, you've generously pre-ordered my graphic novel, Pinball, the graphic history of the silver ball. Thank you. In my book, I really wanted to put the spotlight on the history and psychology behind what makes pinball so amazing. What I didn't want to include was anything about my own journey into pinball. Since I got into pinball in 2009, I've been lucky to use my illustration skills to make all sorts of posters, flyers, shirts, and tokens for different pinball events. Papa stuff. If you own anything from original Papa days, you've got John Chad stuff, right? The most exhilarating project that I've gotten to work on in pinball was making the art package for the Jetsons pinball machine with Spooky Pinball and the Pinball Company. Hot. Holy sh sharts. I've drawn a couple of graphic novels at that point and thought the process of making actual game art would be similar. The cabinet art, playfield, back box all seem to be... Uh, wait. Is this... Oh, this is just explaining how he got to this point. This is actually pretty cool. I don't know if y'all played the... I'm not going to read this whole thing because I want you to experience it. Um, but if you haven't played Jetsons, that's awesome that he did the art on this. Look at his depiction of a spinner. It just keeps going. All right, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Uh, but this is pretty stellar. All right, make sure you check that out. Constructing comics. See all of my process materials for making the Jetsons art package here. All right, internet, scan it. That's for you. Only three flips. <laughs> Need some super lube on there. Flip, 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 flip. All right. Let's get to the piece de resistance. The book. Look at these old hands, man. I'm I'm getting old. Oh, my back. I should have taken some ibuprofen. We won't be able to check it out. We didn't pre-order. Well, it sounds like uh, F you then, huh? <laughs> Got him. It's tough being 40. Shut your mouth. I'm not 44. There's an inherent energy and soul to this book that is inescapable. It is pinball in its purest form. Roger C. Sharp, noted player, designer, author, and the, in quotes, man who saved pinball, end quote. Okay, I'm done shit posting. Enjoy everyone. Yell if you need me. All right, trans, thank you, buddy. All right, let's get into it. Again, this is a hard 
hard. John, come on, dude. I love you, buddy. Hmm. He even drew his own little pimp. Oh, he drew this. It's adorable. Read us a story, Uncle Jack. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. So I want to point something out, right? These might look like photographs. John drew all of these. This is all illustrated by him. He drew all of this. All of these in like high detail. Look at that. There were flippers and butts on that pin. <gasps> oh, I didn't even notice. Oh my God. Flippers and butts. This is, a, I'm getting this tattooed on my body immediately. <laughs> um, Roger Sharp wrote the foreword on here. Oh my gosh. At the time I was growing up on the south side of Chicago, there were no game rooms or arcades. I'll let you read the rest. Look, look at this. This is illustrated. Right? He's so good at this. Beginnings. Which is, could draw? It's just like anything else. If you want to get good at pinball, if you want to get good at drawing. It's all practice based. Thank you so much. Whether you've played a pinball machine before or not, you could probably pick it out on sight. Very true. <gasps> Look at this Bad Cats illustration. That is amazing. The detail on this is just bonkers. Most share a similar silhouette, but under the glass, each holds a different assortment of components, art, and angles that make up the game. Beautiful. In this age of video games and powerful handheld devices that use controllers loaded with inputs to transport the player to lusciously rendered worlds. Look at this video game he made. I play it. I'm buying this book right now. Do it. You might look at the two control buttons on a pinball machine, realize you're swatting at a metal ball rolling down a piece of plywood. And ask yourself, what's the big deal? That's what this guy sounds like. What's the big deal? It's just another arcade game, a big wooden box of flashing nonsense. It's called electronic furniture, by the way. Um, and there's no strategy to it. Bullshit. You flip the flippers and hope to get lucky enough to hit something. The game is built to cheat you. That also might be true. And I've played pinball before. If you've played one, you've played them all. This kid. This is, we're supposed to hate this guy, right? Chad. That's his name. Sorry, Chad. Holy sh... Look at the art on this. Wrong! Wrong! Dead wrong! Just ordered? Hell yeah. Yo, y'all, if you order this, please let me know. In reality, the only certainty about pinball is that every game will be different. Look at this art. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Chad's not lying, mostly. Chad's a piece of... The skill set used to play pinball coupled with how pinball machines communicate with players creates a gaming experience unlike any other. Internet, can I tell you something? It's been a while since I've read for the public, and it's a little nerve-wracking, right? To not, like, stumble and get lost where you're writing. The story of pinball isn't just tied to the arcade boom of the late 70s, early 80s. It goes back much further than that. Look at this. 1930? Ooh. Chad needs to meet the whichever. It's the 1930s, and it's considered by many to be the golden age of pinball. In this early iteration, a ball is plunged onto an inclined playfield where it bounces off of pins, finally settling in a hole with a point value. Looks amazing. My kids are begging me for it right now. Heck yeah. Just wait till we get to some of this. Like, just wait. Nothing in here is photographs, by the way. This is all drawn. But we'll get we'll get to some of this. Look at this. Anyway. Uh, we're here talking about some stuff. Gum and pennies. 
Pinball is a slot machine in disguise, a racket that fleeces children, says the National Association of Citizens Crime Commission. Cool. Degenerates. Oh, this is just going over the brief history of them uh, destroying the crap. I don't want to, like, give the whole thing away, you know? Look at this. When all was said and done, 11,800 pinball machines were destroyed as part of New York City's pinball ban. The sledgehammer. That is incredible. Yo, what's up, Jimmy Jam? <laughs> Wait, what the hell is this? Uh, by 1976, the preconception that pinball was a tool of criminals and that it would corrupt the youth of America has dissipated. Cities that had re-legalized pinball were profiting off of them, and officials in New York City were taking notice. Money. But look at the look at the illust look at this. I'm getting so many things in here tattooed on my body. What happened next, Jack? Enter Roger Sharpay. Because he loved uh, a certain kind of dog. So, Sharpay's. Look how they're depicting this. This is incredible. Pimble's bad for Pimble! I brought this game. It's got my face on it. Stop! You can't play that game. It's probably rigged. Play this other one that you know nothing about. Frick. That's how the story goes. <laughs> Roger had planned on playing the El Dorado, but as Roger plunged the ball, his years of experience playing pinball took over. Ping, ping, ping. Look at his hair flowing. Criminals indeed. But even the myths, in the midst of his masterful play, Roger could tell that the committee was still skeptical. So he called his shot like Babe Ruth pointing at the fences. The center lane at the top, I'm going to hit that shot right now. By pulling back the plunger the perfect distance and letting it go as a ball hurtled up the lane there's no way that roger sharp could have known that the future of pinball bong, the legacy of a truly american art form bing would rest on this one shot What do we stand to lose if Roger doesn't make the shot? I love that he drew like a failed shot. What at its core is pinball? What happened, dad? Well, let's fast forward here, right? Pinball is noisy, it's old fashioned, it's big and clanky. Again, we're not gonna read this whole thing because I don't wanna give it all away, you know? Keep the pins alive, Jack. I'm trying, listen, I'm part of this history, y'all. I, I would like to point something out. And it's something that I like to gloat about, right? But Michael Gottlieb, okay? Of the Gottlieb family. Gassed me up with a comment that I kind of don't want to say now because I don't want it to feel like it's diminishing other people's, like, stuff. But uh, put me up there with the likes of um, <clears throat> this Roger Sharp gentleman. And um, it meant a whole lot. A whole lot. Um, pinball designer Harry Williams is famous for, among many things, coining the pinball mantra. The ball is wild. Look at the drawings in this thing. <laughs> Abe's Lincoln's true. Look at how beautiful this is. Fudge me. The Bagatelle. Going into like the the pool, whatever the hell that game is. Is this Abe's Lincoln's play in this game?
the early attempts were short-lived and not successful. Oh, oh, the, oh, okay. Bagatelles, yeah. Dude, let's skip ahead here a little bit. This, oh, these illustrations. I don't know if you ever saw his early zine work where he drew these mechanisms, but look how great this is. Explaining how like the kickback works. Jeez. Ding. <laughs> Moving right along. Where do they talk about, um, oh, did we miss it? Humpty Dumpty adding the flipper. A game of skill. Who'd you say did the artwork? John Chad wrote the book and did all the artwork. It's phenomenal looking. Here, let's get to some more modern stuff. Oh, here we go. The flipper was designed a bit by accident. In 1947, game designer Harry Mabs was working on a new pitch and bat game. This type of coin op game would have a ball roll and once it came down the center of play field, just like in baseball, the player gets one chance to hit the approaching ball. If the player hit the button at the right time, the bat would hit the ball into a high scoring hole. So pinball flippers were created for a pitch and bat game. How wild is that? Like, how many of you knew that? Right? Dude. As Mavs was working on his new game, he accidentally touched the two wires accident and the flipper bat went f -f 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 It started flipping on him. <laughs> the wires touched a couple more times each time the bat flailed around rapidly. Thus, Humpty Dumpty was born. By the way, this looks like a one-to-one -one replica of the flyer, but again, drawn by John Chad. Look at that. And the first pinball game to have flippers had six freaking flippers on it. Two, four, six. And they were facing away from each other. Freaking awesome. Look at the flippers. Uh, all right, let's skip ahead a little bit more here. Um, something big points. Despite pinball's tricky legal status in some parts of the US, it continued to grow through the 1960s. Oh my God. Like, look at this. This is, I want this like, this is like wallpaper. <laughs> or explaining how a switch works. Look at this. Show that rectifier. I just baked a ham and it's done. These illustrations are really fun to look at. Look, that's... Look at this. Target to relay to scoring reel to chimes. Oh. Look at that. Freaking Black Knight. Let's go. Haunted House. Like the time that it took, you know, to draw all this stuff. And this is a thick book. Friends, friends, arcades working together, talking about the decline of pinball. Oh man, where's Kyle when you need him? What is this? The Adams family sold more than 20,000 units, a huge success in pinball terms. And this was seen as the dawning of a new golden age of pinball. Pat Lawler had carte blanche from Williams to put it even more bells and whistles into his next game. Good news, everyone. And then here's Lawler, I guess, sketching some shit. Uh, I mean, stuff. Uh, the result was Twilight Zone, released in 1992. The game was packed. It was six inches wider than normal pinball machines. Had a mechanical clock toy, a secret passage behind a fourth flipper. Magnets, all sorts of stuff. The game is amazing and performed well, but to the surprise of many, not as well as Adam's family. 
Twilight Zone. Would love to see you play a Twilight? Hey, I would love to have my hands on one. The hard truth was that pinball was just not selling. All the manufacturers in the pinball industry sold 108,000 machines total in 1992, and only 7,343 games six years later total. Look at that number difference. This is death right here. Holy moly. Yep. Whoa, hollow pin. Oh, this is them working out the uh, the pin 3K or pin 2K, sorry. TZ so much better than Adam's family, you think so? Oh, talking about Williams closing the doors, that's just sad. We got some councils. Would you look at this? Look at that Dreamcast. <laughs> you knew it was bad, but damn, yeah, right? Like, not only did John draw all of these amazing illustrations, but he gathered so much amazing information for this book, right? This thing is phenomenal. Here's Roger again, getting the thing, doing the stuff. And let's move on to chapter six. So here's Roger winning, people screaming. Uh, let's move on to, okay, so here we go. Uh, new companies popping up, Jersey Jack Pinball. That is ambiguous Jack Guarneri and ambiguous Chuck Emery. <laughs> JJP and Spooky coming on the scene. Uh, they obviously talk about Stern sort of holding the, the torch aloft there. There's Simpsons, Spider-Man, Indiana Jones, and Iron Man. Oh, all of the companies, I guess, that have been and currently are. Uh, Homepin, Multimorphic, Deep Root, American Spooky, Stern, Chicago Gaming Company, Jersey Jack, which is now in Chicago. Suncoast, which I don't think is around anymore. Highway, Dutch. Oh, look, it's Jerry with the P3. Podcasters, relayed pinball news and interview. Okay. Oh, we're getting close to uh, how pinball got expanded. Here's Bowen doing a tutorial on Papa. The pinball map, huge. Pinberg, pinball showing up in bars again. This is Logan Arcade, look at that. That's awesome. Pinberg, yeah. As well as game reviews and playthroughs can be streamed right into your home. Look at this guy, donate to kids. This looks like a guy my mom married like 20 years ago. <laughs> Where's dead underscore flip? Stop it. Peak danger. This guy looks like his name is Denny. We gotta make this shot if we want them points. All right, internet. Oh my God, he got me. Hey, it's one of your favorite games. And he's got me playing Jackpot, which I absolutely appreciate being immortalized next to that game. And look at this, it's him watching. That's so good. I love this crowd pick too, because it's got a little bit of everybody in it. Like you can find specific people like Roger's hanging out there. Um, this is, I believe this Cholo looking dude was supposed to be me. Um, lots of Papa shirts, lots of, oh man, it's so good. Where's Waldo exactly? A story in history that are directly tied to the American manufacturing industry, entertainment and invention. <laughs> A story in history that spans multiple continents and hundreds of years. Someone watch your stream to make that illustration. Come on, internet, right? How stellar is it? Look at this. Look at this. Fuck. 
Someone go buy this book immediately. Or you're grounded. Hey, look, it's Chad. He's back. That's like a scene out of Akira. You beat me? This is awesome. Hurtling towards new worlds to explore. Oh, he's got a glossary here, too. What the apron is, back box, back glass, bagatelle, ball save, body English, bumpers, jet bumpers, thumper bumpers, uh, bumper pit, cabinets, captive vault. Look at this drawing. Look at this. Look at this. Explaining how drop target. Oh my god. Maybe someone will have it at Paths. Oh, Pinball at the Zoo? That'd be cool. Rollover switches. Slingshot illustration. Oh. What's it called? It is called Pinball, A Graphic History of the Silver Ball by John Chad. Spinner. The glossary makes that book awesome. Yeah. How like scoops work. How, to to John, you are too freaking nice, dog. Oh my god. Pinball streaming <laughs> sensation. Jack Danger has a great resource page with animated examples of flipper moves. Oh man. Bibliography, a giant thank you. Uh, I'm going to sit down and read this tonight. There's my guy. There he is. Damn. John, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you run out. Get this for yourself. Scan that if you need to. $24.99. It's more money in Canada for some reason. I don't know how that works. <clears throat> Just ordered it? Hell yes. One or two. Always buy two. And, and just and just so you internet so you know this, I'm not like there's no kickbacks or promotions or anything. Like I, I love this thing. I love John Chad to death. And I just wanted to show off how just absolutely beautiful this thing is and how you all need to buy this freaking book immediately. Look at all the stuff that we didn't cover. You know? What look, look at all of this. Holy S. They get soggy with all the maple syrup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> be, be nice to Canada, you jerks. Cheers. I miss Pinberg. Me too. You had my attention at comics. You had my money at pinball. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Arrives tomorrow? Heck yeah. 